Executor, I bring news most dire. The Cerebrate that we thought we had killed has arisen again. The creature's battered form was reincarnated despite the considerable damage we inflicted upon it. Even now, the Cerebrate drives its brood in preparation for their next offensive. It is as I feared. It was folly to believe Tassadar could be trusted. The Conclave will not soon forget his wanton betrayal. Nevertheless, we must stand resolute, for attacking defenseless Cerebrates is not the way of true Protoss warriors. We shall overcome the entire swarm with the might and the fury that is our heritage. Executor, we shall lead our main strike force to the province of Sion, which has fallen to the Zerg. It's time the Zerg felt the wrath of the Sons of Ire. Prayer to Phoenix will remain here with a small detachment and guard Antioch from any further assaults. Adun be with you, Executor. Bring swift death to the enemies of Ire. Oh dear, well, it turns out that Tassadar's plan didn't really work for us, did it? So... Welcome everyone back to Let's Play StarCraft. This is the third Protoss mission, Higher Ground. And welcome to the introduction of the Scout. Now, it's kind of interesting that the it's called a Scout, despite the fact that it's probably... I don't want to call it the best aerial unit, because it seems to me to be in a really weird place. It's basically a super-powered wraith with uh, no cloaking device, but the price that you pay for it is incredibly large. Uh, you, you know, you're talking this thing will cost you, I think it's 275 minerals and 125 Vespian gas. So these things are very expensive, and they're just as pathetic against ground targets as wraiths are. So... That's not a big endorsement of them, but what is an endorsement of them a little bit is that they have ridiculously good air-to-air -air capabilities. Uh, the only things that can match them in an air-to-air -air fight would be something like a battle cruiser, and considering a battle cruiser costs even more than a scout does, you know, it's uh, it's a good trade-off. Uh, scouts pretty much dominate air-to-air, -air, but the problem is they're so expensive that you really can't form the entire backbone of your army around them except on one or two maps uh, in the single player where you are pretty much uh, you know you're pretty much forced into using air units and you can't yet build carriers uh, carriers are pretty much ultimate air units but the problem with them being that they are ludicrously expensive uh, if you go I think that if you max out a carrier uh, with uh, its interceptors and everything like that, I believe that a carrier costs something like 550 minerals and 200 Vespine gas. So, you know, it's, um, it's a big investment. Big, big investment. Compared to a scout. But that's the whole idea, you know. Protoss units are expensive and you just have to deal with it as best you can. Okay, let's go. That's pretty crappy placement, Boomer. That's really not good. It's like block off my own assimilator. I see. I'm just using the scout to get a good look at the map. That's one thing they are incredibly useful for. Uh, if I do accidentally get in range of some hydralisks or a uh, or a uh, spore colony, then the scout can definitely take a couple of hits without being tremendously worried. Also, you can do some Overlord harassing, just be a general pain in the backside. But they're not going to wipe out swarms of ground units. They simply don't have the firepower for that. And you definitely don't want to be taking them into an area that's infested with Hydralisks, because Hydralisks are pretty good against scouts. 
So, gonna begin warping in some zealots. My general idea here is to go zealot dragoon, uh, but I am gonna build up a force of scouts as well because there's two zerg bases that we have to take. Uh, there is the red zerg who are, well, they're sort of in the middle, sort of west of the map, and there's the white zerg who are in the north of the map. The Red Zerg are really well entrenched against ground units and the White Zerg are really well entrenched against air units. So if I had any sort of sense really I would be building up a uh, I would be building up an army of scouts to take on the red base and I would take an army of uh, dragoons and zealots and wipe out the white base. But as it is, I just end up pretty much building a huge army and wiping both bases out. But you'll see what I mean when you come across the red base. And I've mentioned er already earlier in some other videos that um, the Zerg go like the Zerg just go completely batshit insane on defenses. In this, uh, on like static defenses, you can see my building placement's been pretty rough so far here put my forge out of the way here. I think we can still only do 1-1 one, one upgrades. Put my cybernetics core out of the way as well. I'll definitely be wanting dragoons in this mission. I believe the Zerg have quite a few flying units at their disposal. So dragoons are definitely going to be something I'm going to want. And let's just keep up pro production. I've not been doing that tremendously well, actually, in the opening sort of seven minutes here. I've not been uh, keeping my drone production up. Okay, let's bring the scout back. I think one of the official quote-unquote blurbs about the scout pretty much said, to any other race this would be a warship, but to the Protoss it's a scout. And just trying to get over the fact that the Protoss have abilities that most uh, races wouldn't even dream of. And to be honest, that's the reason the Zerg are interested in them. You know, the Zerg wouldn't be interested in them if um, they didn't have just monumental godlike abilities. And given the fact that the Protoss were created by the Zelnaga, the same force that empowered the Zerg, uh, they are. Um, obviously going to have some things uh, some things going for them but let's get some guys in gas and as you can see that pylon is being a pain and that's completely my fault and I'm going to keep warping in zealots for the moment I think I've got a little bit confused there I used uh, group hotkeys to uh, And let's also make sure I don't get supply blocked, although that's more than likely going to happen at some point. And there we go, got four in gas, that should be enough. And I can just settle into uh, settle into the macro game here. There's going to be a lot of cutting in this mission because it really is a slow and steady mission. You're attacking very entrenched positions, so you can't, uh, you know, you can't just go in all guns blazing because well you can go in all guns blazing but you need to have a sizable army in order to do it so and when I say sizable I don't mean 12 I mean like 24 zealots 24 dragoons that sort of thing because you're up against so many static defenses that there's just no way to uh, there's no way to do anything else uh, one thing that I would be tempted to do and one thing you'll see me start doing in later missions is I am going to start using shield batteries not just because of not just because it's a uh, useful building because it's not you know it's not tremendously helpful in giving your units like massive survivability or increasing your tech tree but what it does do uh, very well uh, the shield battery is that Scouts and carriers and things like that, your more expensive units, if you lose them, that is a big loss. You know, that that is a huge loss lo losing those sorts of units. So what I will tend to do, I will tend to try and uh, micro things like scouts and uh, 
well, carriers you don't have to micro too much because they've got so much firepower. But like scouts, I will definitely try and micro. Uh, the reason for that being that upgrade complete. Uh, see, it can only go to one 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 upgrades here, which is a bit meh. Scouts, I will try and micro because they are expensive and slow, so I will pull them out of combat and recharge them at a shield battery. Again, you might not see that in this mission, but you will definitely see it at some point. The Protoss, you just have to, uh, you have to accept that you have to do at least some form of microing with their troops. Certainly the more expensive ones. Zealots and Dragoons, I still tend to throw into the fire a little bit more than I should do, um, but... Losing like two or three scouts carelessly can be a really big drain on your economy, certainly if it happens early. You know, that that can be a super big drain. But I'm building a Stargate and I will be building some scouts, but at the moment, because I'm on one base, I can't really support it all. Uh, you attack that, but you see how fast scouts just obliterate mutilisks. It's really not funny how much better scouts are than mutilisks in there to air. Um, got the one to one then air to air missiles I think do 30 damage when they're upgraded by one so three scouts four, four scouts will one shot a mutilisk I'm pretty sure uh, so you know 12 scouts versus 12 mutilisk turns into an absolute uh, you know it turns into a duck shoot for the most part but gonna start producing some scouts they aren't the quickest things in the entire world but they will work and just as i'm planning on moving out oh look what turns up mutilists are really not what you want to be using against protoss guys uh at least not the way the ai uses them because there's just the way that a human player is going to build there's going to be uh there's going to be Dragoons by the dozen, and there's going to be uh, scouts on the field as well, so mutilists just do nothing against that, uh, unless they're in large numbers. And obviously, when you're talking humans playing rather than the AI, uh, mutilisks, you can get two or three mutilisks per, well, sort of two mutilisks per scout. So, therefore, you know, it, it kind of balances out at the end. But guardians are still fine as well. Scouts are definitely an expensive way to go. So this is a rather uh, a rather big move towards an expansion. Uh, there's only six Zerglings over here, if I remember, so I could just take half a dozen Scouts and mop them up. But uh, the old idea of never being too careful and all that. So as you can see, I have managed to get... A decent force up, but it's mainly gateway units still at the moment. There's only six scouts there, and we did start with three. So I've only built three scouts out of there, and I really do need to get an expansion going if I'm going to produce scouts, because uh, you know, with the cost that scouts are, they're really not a. Uh, it's really not an option for me to just straight up uh, produce out of one base i don't think i have anything like the economy necessary for that and just produce a few more dragoons here okay so looks like i've got my expansion down now got the well got the assimilator at least and go nexus and yeah, let's see you can see i'm already sort of struggling here that's a lot of mutilists and my scouts are away from home Oh, well, one scout is going to go in there and try and uh, clean some of this up at least. But supported by the number of dragoons that he is, he should be okay, I think. I'm assuming he focuses fire on the correct zealot. I'm just making. Yeah, you can see. Look how, look how like not much. I mean, number one, the mutilists are not focusing on that scout, which considering how much scouts obliterate mutilists is probably not the best thing to do. And of course, in its death throes, that mutilist is going to kill that dragoon. But never mind, I probably should have paid a bit more attention to that, but uh, that's okay, and the scout's fairly unharmed. So uh, back to building dragoons I guess and let's get that expansion up and running because I'm going to need that okay so half a dozen scouts here looks like I'm getting attacked again in my main base 
Given the fact it was a line like that, I'm guessing Zerglings, and I'm not paying any attention whatsoever to my base. Yep, Zerglings. You can kind of tell by the... Uh, and they've really done a number on my mineral line here. So that's going to be a rebuild, which is going to be a little bit awkward, but... Zealot's is going to take this down, but that was uh, that was not good. I didn't see that uh, until it was almost way too late. So I'm going to be relying on my expansion to keep me up for a little bit, but until I can rebuild that. But I guess it's time that we uh, show the Zerg who's the boss and show them the fury of the sons of Aya. Not mocking Aldaris in any way, because I would never do that. Pleased to be killing this overlord. There we go. This is a fairly sizable force, twelve dragoons and twelve zealots, but it's uh, it's only barely adequate to the task. I probably, if I wanted to be safer with this, I should probably bring twelve more zealots. But, unfortunately, I think I got a little bit impatient here. Uh, I think 12 more zealots will make this an awful lot easier. The problem is 12 zealots will, once they go down, the dragoons will go down very quickly after it. So, you know, I'm relying on those, uh, I'm relying on those zealots doing a lot of tanking first up. Here we go. Sunken colony and sport colony. Probably going to lose some scouts here if I'm not careful. I'm leaving them in there, but which is a little bit daft because they're going to get ripped apart if I don't... Yeah, that's okay. One of them lost its shields, but aside from that, it's okay. And you can see just... What the Zerg are doing here, which is quite quite cool, I like the idea, is that they are... Look how many sunken colonies are here! This is ridiculous! It's like the Zerg have built nothing but sunken colonies in this area. I've already lost six zealots to this like armada of sunken colonies. Scouts do not do well against Hydralis, and that one is dying, I think, unless a miracle happens. Oh, a miracle happened. More sunken colonies. Look how many sunken colonies there are. It's like, no matter where you go, there are three sunken colonies. But fortunately, Dragoons do a pretty good job at battering down sunken colonies. But unfortunately, I've now lost all my zealots, I think, at this point. Yes, yes, why not? More sunken colonies. Because the amount we've got isn't enough. There's even one in the... There's even one in the mineral line. Look at this. Well, what's that now? Nine sunken colonies? Ten sunken colonies? And I'm going to lose a scout here because I'm not paying attention. Oh no, I just got it out of the range of the spore colony just quickly enough. I mean, is it, admittedly, this Zerg base is just dead now, but... I lost pretty much all of my uh, quote-unquote invasion force there, so I've now got, what, five, sc six scouts, two of which are badly damaged, and four dragoons left out of that entire, out of that entire army. Still, I guess I'd better get building more stuff then. Uh, I've got the economy too now. There's six. There's some more dragoons, so I suppose things are okay on that front. Will you please kill that hydralisk. It's being super annoying. At least if I kill the hive, it means there's no more zerg units coming out of here, so I can just then rebuild my forces and I'll be fine. How long does it take a group of four dragoons and? Six scouts to take out a hive? The answer is a long period of time. Anyway, the hive's dead now, so I guess I can just retreat my units back up. Once this egg is hatched, I just want to kill whatever pops out of it. Oh, that overlord got a bit close. 
Okay, so that's the Hydralis dead. And I'm going to back off with my forces here because there's no real need to go charging in on that sunken colony. And I think that, yeah, I'm just going to back off and uh, I will refill my forces. I think that base is definitely the tougher of the two bases to crack. Uh, I think I could go four gate here, actually. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to bring the remainder of my fort. I'm going to bring a few more forces in now while I uh, wait. Oh, look, they ran smack into a bunch of hydralis right over the top of my scouts. How many scouts have I got? Nine. Again, one of which is tremendously badly damaged, but... Oh, my dragoons got a bit too close there. I think I might lose one. Oh, <laughs> Surprise Dragoons! Yeah, I think I lost one. Oh well. No big deal. Okay, let's finish what we started in this area. And I've got some Zealots there as well. Really, this is a bit of a... This whole mission really is a bit of a battle of attrition. Uh, let's just finish off the Zerg base as it is. Once the Hive and all the drones have gone, they're not. it's not going to produce anything, so it's just a case of wiping out all the buildings. But, you know, what were we talk We were definitely talking double figures of defensive structures there, and the Zerg are really fond of their defensive structures when the AI is playing as them. Uh, not quite so much as it is if you play, oh, what was it called, that stupid expansion that was, uh, Insurrection, that's the one, that uh, really daft expansion, um, with very little plot and uh, incredibly funny voice acting, which I may actually try and go through. It was a bit bugged when I, because uh, I do own a copy, but... It was a bit bugged when I did try and play it before, um, but I might try and get it working just to show it off. But then again, maybe some things are best left uncovered. Plus, I want to do a few more STO videos after Star after StarCraft because uh, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it now. I'm beginning to play. You know, I've started finally, as a lot of my subscribers would probably say, I've finally started playing the uh, advanced and elite versions of the uh, STFs, and they are uh, they're a lot of fun playing those missions. I still get the occasional fail if I'm hugging it, but uh, overall I think that it adds a level of challenge that doesn't exist at normal, and if you get a good group, you get a decent sense of accomplishment. Plus, if those of you who are impressed that I made 20 million EC in a week, you can probably make 50 million EC in a week if you're, uh, if you're playing advanced in elite queues. I'll do a more advanced uh, video on that front. There's plenty of stuff for me still to show off. Anyway, but this is StarCraft, and there goes the Red Zerg. <laughs> Overlords thought they were getting away. Twelve scouts say no. One shot. Okay, so that's the uh, Red Zerg taken care of. I can expand down here should I wish, and in fact I do wish, but there's really no point in doing this. Uh, at this point, we're just going to take uh, whatever forces we have and go and stomp all over the White Zerg. I think I have something like 24 Dragoons and 12 Scouts. Oh, well, that happened. Good job I was still building Dragoons, I guess. But, yeah. You can see the Dragoons still popping out. It's like, I have returned, and it's a fight! Yeah, that wasn't the best, was it, really? Let's go kill an overlord. No, build more dragoons. More dragoons. And yeah, I'm queuing up on I'm assuming. Okay, this base is actually not as big of a uh, threat as it should be. You can see the scourges there. But this base is definitely way more dedicated to taking out flyers than it is taking out ground units. So even though there are some spore column, uh, spine even though there are um, sunken colonies around here 
they aren't uh, anywhere near the threat that they are in the red base. Plus, I decided to go with, I think, is it 24 zealots I've gone with this time? It's something like that, I think. So, the wall in front of my dragoons is a lot bigger, and this fight is going to end up being a massacre compared to uh, what happened in that red base. Where, to be honest, if that red base was better defended with minions, then that battle could easily have gone wrong for me. But uh, this is where I don't think there's going to be much of a problem. That drone is trying to build an assimilator. It failed. That drone is trying to build an assimilator. It failed. That drone is also trying to build an assimilator. It will fail. Zergling's running interference for the uh, sunken colony there, which is quite cool. I think the AI will prioritise certain threats. Uh, you know, if something's firing on it, the uh, AI will prioritise that as the enemy that it's going to shoot at. And as you can see, my scouts are saying well out of this, um, and because they really don't need to be here. It looks like we're going to thwack the Zerg quite easily this time. Uh, looks like the red base was way more, uh, way more threatening than the white bases. I just love watching all those volleys of uh, blue particles heading into the uh, find out when you've got a shed load of dragoons. Yeah, this base really wasn't well defended. I mean, I know I just defended against a quote-unquote counter-attack, but you'd have thought they'd have had a few more units than this, but this is the last building, and that's going to be the end of this mission. So, we've shown the Zerg who's boss. For now. Antioch is under attack by overwhelming Zerg forces. Praetor, you must hold your position for as long as possible. Fight on, brave Phoenix. And know that the gods watch over you. Entaro Adun. Aldaris, you douche, tell him to withdraw. If it's overwhelming Zerg forces, then get the hell out of there and regroup. The Protoss can't afford to throw away people like Phoenix. Ugh. Never mind. We'll see how that turns out next time. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.